Um, in, in large swaths, what we're going to do today is I'm going to do a little bit of talking. We're going to do some sharing together, and then we'll jump into learning songs. Um, but I want to start with asking you some questions. And Jesse, maybe you can write the questions in the chat. I want to ask you um, what brought you here. And two, who would you like to dedicate your learning to today? So um, could be like someone you miss singing with or someone you think would benefit from hearing these songs. Um, so again, the questions are what brought you here? Who would you like to dedicate your learning to today? And while you write those in the chat, um, I will sing you a little preview of a song we're going to learn later. Asulo la foni La ras ma shukha ba khavle ya ovet asulo la fonim ba khise Thank you. Thanks for all your answers. Um, okay, so I'm going to share a little bit about myself and how I came to be here. Um, feel free to keep uh, answering the questions in the chat. Um, thanks for those who answered so far. Um, I'm going to share my screen to show you some pictures of my family. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's not my family. This is Ewa, <laughs> um, which is a, a really cool band that sings uh, traditional Yemenite music fusion. Um, so check them out if you haven't heard of them. So on the left side here, these are my grandparents on my mom's side who came to Israel from Yemen. 
And on the right side is my dad's family um, who are Ashkenazi. They came from Poland and Hungary to Israel, Palestine. Um, and so I'm a mix and uh, it's not letting me go to the next slide. Oh, there it is. This is just more pictures of my family. That's me and my mother. And these are some of my cousins um, at traditional henna ceremony for my cousin's wedding. Um, okay, going back. So, uh, okay, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about how I came to be studying and teaching this music um, because I didn't actually grow up really singing Yemenite music in the house. Um, and a big part of that is um, assimilation. You know, when uh, Yemenite people came to Israel, um, their culture wasn't totally embraced. It was more looked down upon. Um, and it wasn't so popular to have like, you know, you wouldn't hear Yemenite singers or other Mizrahi singers on the radio or like in record stores. Um, and then, so that, so there's like the Ashkenazi dominance in Israel, even though there's a large population of um, Yemenite people there. And then my family came to Israel before, um, came to the United States before I was born. And here, like not only, I just didn't actually like have access to that culture at all. Like I grew up going to a day school, but it was pretty much all Ashkenazim. Um, there wasn't a synagogue or any culture surrounding me where I could look. So the extent of the Yemenite music I grew up with was really Ofra Chaza. Um, and a couple of years ago, as I was getting more into singing um, Nigunim, thanks to the work of some of uh, some great teachers of mine, like Joey Weisenberg, I, I saw I saw Joey and other people singing these Nigunim and being really into music that felt like their heritage. And I I grew up playing classical music, and so I, I didn't really have a huge interest in Jewish music until I encountered people really singing these Nigunim like really passionately. And um, I was like, this is really beautiful. And I want to know the music from where my family came from, too. And it took me a while because, like I said, there's not a lot of access to um, this culture or teachers. But eventually, I found my way to a teacher in Israel named Tom Fogel. And he's been teaching me these songs. And so the songs I am teaching you today, they're not songs that I grew up singing on Simchat Torah, but they're songs that I learned like about a year ago over Skype. Um, and that's how I came to be doing this. Um, and I think you'll find that it's the experience of a lot of Sephardi and Mizrahi Jews that they have this experience growing up in the States where um, there's just not a lot of access to Sephardi and Mizrahi culture. And that part of us is invisibilized and it's just hard to access and we're doing the work of reclaiming it. And then you have this issue of like, oh, well, I didn't grow up with this, so I don't feel like maybe it's so authentic. Um, and there's a lot of questions that come up with it. So um, I think assimilation is something that affects all of us. Um, we're in a culture that asks us to, to assimilate and fall in line and learn the dominant culture. Um, so um, that's my little spiel about that. And I wanted to give folks a chance to just reflect a little bit about like, who are your people? Where are you coming from? And how has assimilation affected you and your people? And maybe if you get to it, um, like, yeah, exactly what, what Shana just wrote, assimilation if, is learning your culture authentic, um, how you relate to that question. So who are your people? How has assimilation affected you and your family? And how do you relate to authenticity? Uh, what does that mean to you? So I'm gonna ask Jesse to put us in breakout rooms of three people so we can get a chance. We'll just go for a couple of minutes to engage with these questions um, before we dive into learning the music. Um, cool, so about to whoosh you away into breakout rooms. You there, um, I started making the break, breakout rooms and now there's been some movement. So you'll be in groups of two or three. Um, and I will broadcast out the messages to you. I can also put them in the chat right now. Um, if you want to say that again, who are your people? Um, how has assimilation affected you, right? And how do you relate to authenticity?
or not. Um, okay, so you'll be in groups of two or three and um, yeah, and you'll just have a, a couple minutes per person to share. Um, and okay, I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. Hey. Um, hey everyone, welcome back. So I just wanted to give folks a chance to share back any fruits from your conversation um, along the questions, who are your people? How has assimilation affected you? And how do you relate to authenticity? I would just love to hear what you're thinking. Um, so you can just unmute yourself if you'd like to share. Can I share that those were three very big questions and, and we didn't get to even scratch the surface on the first one. Yeah, of course, there are big questions. It was a short time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it can be also just thoughts you have that you didn't get a chance to engage with in breakout rooms, but you'd like to share now. Uh, I'd like to share that um, as far as I'm concerned, it's all authentic because Jews are all one family and I will continue to believe that until the day I die. So we're sharing family stories and family music and family traditions. Thank you. I just, want, I just wanted to say that for a long time because I didn't know who my father was, I thought that I was um, half Spanish. And so, um, I thought that I was Sephardic and I wasn't. And so that I went through a long time in my life thinking something that wasn't true because then my mother told me that my father was really Italian and um, he, he wasn't even, he wasn't Jewish, he was Italian. So um, I, I, I think too that it's all sort of irrelevant in, in a lot of ways if you, if you haven't got a real strong um, original connection to who you were. So to me, it's like all good. <laughs> I respectfully disagree. Uh, it's very important to reclaim our roots. And one of the things that I know is that there's been a lot of things that have been absorbed into Ashkenazi tradition that actually belong to other cultures and they're not named. And that's very important because the uh, whole idea of having, there's a, there was a time before the Middle Ages in which we were all Jews. And there was lots of accepted variation that has changed over the last eight centuries. And we can't ignore that. Uh, and the fact that there are so many of us who are erased and not recognized as being Jews because we don't look Ashkenazi, whatever that is, um, is, there, is very highly problematic in terms of our placement and our power. Um, so sorry. Go ahead. Um, um, hi, my name is Mirusha. I was talking a bit about this in small group, but my, just to be very quick, my mother is Ashkenazi with some roots in Spain that I don't really think are that important because, you know, didn't, she doesn't really care. Um, <laughs> but my dad's side of the family are Turks and Albanians from former Yugoslavia. And one thing that I grew up with, well, they're Muslims as well. And one of the things I grew up with a lot was being told by both sides of my family, one, are you Jewish or Albanian? Are you Jewish or are you Turkish? Are you Jewish or are you in some ways Arab because you know after post 9-11 everyone was collapsed into this one you know threatening category um but I think one of the things that's become very interesting as I've grown up is unpacking um mislabeling and unpacking um you know this idea that we can't hybridize our identities or this idea that we can't return and that if you're not you know born with it and that if you're not raised with it you can't um explore it and i just want to say you know and that's this is like such a healing space to hear you talk so openly about like i may not have grown up with xyz thing but i taught myself i recovered this practice and i just want to say that is so amazing and like i'm totally there with you um but yeah like everything that my dad didn't like growing up to what growing up or he thought was too you know Turkish or too oriental or too you know too much Arabic was um uh, I can't really use it because it's a very derogatory word to, to, toward Roma but basically that it was all that and my mom got confused about halfway through her marriage with my dad because she was like 
like Mehmet, are you Roma? Are you not? Like, what is going on here? Um, so like those crossed boundaries and complications and like internalized assimilation to himself totally happen. Thanks so much, Milusha. Yeah, I, I think it gets challenging when we have a lot of identities and when some of them are invisibilized. And I just want to say that I think we get to be all the parts of who we are. And when um, there's outside forces telling us we can't, we get to really fight to have that and fight to believe that we get to be everything who we are. And um, when we also get to obviously like relate to people who are different from us and have, who are also the same um, in some ways and, are, and have different backgrounds from us. Um, okay, so I'm gonna share a little bit of information about Yemenite song culture and then we'll jump into learning the songs, which is the main thing we came for, but thanks to everyone who shared in our discussion. I know these are really big questions. Okay, um, so um, broadly, Yemenite uh, Jewish, when we talk about Jewish Yemenite music, um, it's vocal music, uh, it's vocal and percussion. And the reason um, there's not, you don't hear instruments in Yemenite Jewish music, you do now, like if you listen to Ofra Chaza, you hear instruments. Um, but in the traditional music, there aren't instruments. And that's because uh, the Rambam, uh, Maimonid, the, the Rambam um, rules that there sh the Yemenites follow the Rambam, and he ruled that since there's no uh, holy temple, there's no Beit Hamikdash in Jerusalem, that there should shouldn't be any instruments because it's too joyful. Um, so the music revolved around just vocal and percussion. Um, you have two broad categories, which are the like uh, men's songs which are religious, they're recorded in the Diwan, which is uh, a prayer book or a song book. Uh, many of the songs written in it were by Shalom Shabazi, um, who's called the Shakespeare of Yemen. Some say Shakespeare is the Shabazi of England. <laughs> um, he's a prolific poet. We're not actually learning anything about him, but he's a good name to know, Shalom Shabazi. Um, like people, I was talking, I met my, my great uncle this winter. Um, he told me his family went a couple of times and made pilgrimage to his grave and it was said to be healing. It's like a great tzaddik and a, like a big hero um, of, of Yemenite Jews. Um, their religious songs, the, the men's quote unquote men's music um, and mostly sung in Hebrew, also some Aramaic and some Arabic, but most of it is in Hebrew. Um, and that's the sort of tradition we'll be singing in tonight, the holiday songs. Um, but you should know there's also women's songs that were more about the secular, the everyday. They also had some religious themes um, and were almost entirely sung in Arabic, which is the vernacular language of Yemenite people. Um, Yemenite Jews spoke like sort of a, a like a Jewish Arabic, like a, he a he sort of a Hebrew Arabic combo. Um, but the women's songs, a lot of the songs were actually shared by Muslim women of the same culture. Um, so, okay, the next, any questions about that? What I said so far? Just take a pause. Um, okay, so the next thing I wanted to share with you, um, some of you might have noticed when I was singing earlier is the pronunciation doesn't sound totally like the Hebrew you might recognize. And the traditional Yemenite pronunciation of Hebrew actually sounds quite different. So I'm gonna teach you a few of the, of, the, of the differences. There's a lot, probably too much to cover for like one introductory session. So I'm gonna tell you some of the main vowel sounds that are different um, and we'll be able to apply those later. But I just want to say, like, it's okay if you don't get them. <laughs> it's a lot to learn, a lot, lot to keep track of. Um, so, but I'll just tell you what they are so that you know. Um, sharing is pause. Bring your shared window to the front. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, oh yeah, sometimes you see Yemenites playing olive tins as part of the no instrument thing. 
Um, that's Shalom Shabazi. Um, oh, these are photos from Operation Magic Carpet, which was like the big operation where lots of Yemenite Jews came to Israel, Palestine. And here's what I wanted to show you. So for pronunciation, um, the kamats um, is pronounced just like in traditional Ashkenazi pronunciation as an O. So instead of saying ba, you would say bo. Um, the segol, which is normally, which is we usually hear pronounced e, is pronounced as an a, so we would say ba. And so instead of the word ayelet, in like the song ayelet chen, which some of you might know, ayelet, you'd say ayalat. Um, instead of segol, you'd say segol. Instead of, let me see. Instead of Eretz, you'd say Aras. Um, and finally, the Cholam, which is usually we hear an O sound, um, it can be pronounced still as an O, but sometimes you'll hear it pronounced as an E. Um, those are the big changes in the vowels. Oh, and there's one that I didn't write here. Um, <laughs> but the I'm sorry for those of you who don't have as much access to who don't have who, who don't know the Hebrew vowels by name. Um, but the shva na at the beginning of a word is pronounced as an a ah instead of like an uh sound. Um, and you'll see this when we get to the songs. Um, yeah, some of the vowels are different too. Uh, the consonants are different as well, but we'll we'll get to that. In the transliteration, I've sort of included the changes. Any cues about that? Any questions? Okay, so it's time to learn some songs. Um, Jesse, could you post the song sheet in the chat? Thanks. Um, and once you have it open, we're gonna start on the second page. It's a bit of a simpler text and a simpler melody. So I think it'll be good for us as a warm up. Thanks, Elena. It always feels nice when people post affirming things in the chat because over Zoom, it's hard to tell how things are going. So thank you. Um, okay, so are folks ready with the song sheet on the second page? Okay. Thanks, Carrie. Okay, great. Here we go. So I'm gonna just sing a little bit of it for you. The, the text is rejoice in the rejoicing of the Torah, like rejoice in Simchat Torah of the Torah of Moshe that God gave to Moshe or Moses. On Mount Sinai, God descended and spoke with Moshe. And that second part is the chorus. On Mount Sinai, God descended and spoke with Moshe. And the first line is repeated in verses, but basically there's just epithets for God and Moshe that are put in according to the alphabet. So um, the, the name Moshe is replaced and the name of God is replaced with epithets. But other than that, the text is the same all the way through. Um, I'll sing it a little bit and hopefully that'll help it make sense. So it goes like no song sheet. There's a link to the song sheet. Jesse maybe can post it again. Um, so it goes like this. Simchu besimchat terat mesha, kinato no alehim la mesha, al har sina yorat, wadi bari ma mesha. Simchu besimchat terat adil, kinato no boruch la mesha, al har sina yorat, wadi bari ma mesha. Simchu basimcha Torah jiber, kinato no dagu la mesha al har Sinai orat, wadi bari ma mesha. Simchu basimcha Torah hodur, kinato no va wa ed la mesha al har Sinai orat. Wadi bari ma mesha, simchu basimchat terat zakai. 
Kinato no hanun la mesha al har sina yora wadi bari mamesha. Okay, so you hear this one part keeps coming back. Um, and that's this, the, what I did want to say about Yemenite song culture is that it's very participatory. You see this in a lot of Mizrahi cultures, but there's verses and like the sort of chazan or the leader might start by singing a few verses. Then there's usually a chorus or refrain that everyone will sing. And then after a few verses, it'll be passed around. So that's my hope is that after you learn it, we can pass around and different people can take different verses. So I hope um, that you're up for that. Um, but we'll start, I'll start by teaching you the chorus and then I'll sing a few verses so you'll get it in your ear. And then I'll teach you some of the verses so we can pass it around. Um, sounds good? No one's required to sing also if you don't want to, but ho I hope some people uh, will want to. Okay, so the chorus goes like this. Um, I'll sing the whole thing and then I'll break it into chunks. <laughs> So I'll first say the words actually, so you can repeat after me, Al Har Sinai, Al Har Sinai, Yorad, Wadiber, oh sorry, Wadibar, Wadibar, Imamesha, Imamesha, Al Har Sinai Yorad, Wadibar Imamesha. I think somebody is unmuted, so it's causing a bit of an echo. So if you're not on mute, then I'll just ask you to mute. Okay, that seems to solve. Okay, and so this, the melody goes like this. We'll do it chunk by chunk. Al har Try it. Al har We'll do it one more time. Al har Wadiba, Wadiba, Imamesha, Imamesha, Wadiba, Imamesha, Wadiba, Imamesha. Okay, the whole thing sounds like this. Al Har Yorad, Wadiba, Imamesha. We'll try it one more time. Al Har Yorad. Wadibar imamesha, one more time. Al har sina yorad, wadibar imamesha. How are we doing? The, the ima word. Oh, why is it ima and not imamesha? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. It's just a, a, a feature that sometimes if you have a repeated consonant, or even if you just have a consonant against a consonant, you add a little uh sound. And you hear that actually in a lot of uh, Mizrahi singing. Um, good question, thank you. Okay, um, does anyone wanna try the chorus on their own? I'll sing the verse and then you sing the chorus. Okay, no takers yet, but okay, Itai, yay. Okay, so I'll sing the verse and then you take the chorus. And but everyone sing the chorus with Itai. We'll just get to hear Itai singing it, so it won't be all me. Hang on. So uh, where's the part that I'm singing now? So you're gonna sing the second line, Al Har Sina Yorad, Wadibar Imamesha. Looking for the song. It's not the first one. There it is. Okay. Yep. Second ah. song. Second line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Simchu b'simcha terat mesha, kinato no alehim la mesha. Al hasina yohad, wadiba ima mesha. Beautiful. Anyone else want to give it a shot? Now that Ikai has broken the ice. Jesse? Sure. Yay. Okay, here we go. I'll sing the second, the first verse now. Simchu basimcha terat adir, kinato no boruch la mesha. Al hasina yorad. Yorad, 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 
Is that a raised hand or is that a, Noor, were you raising your hand to go next? No, that was just a, okay, Eli. Simchu besimchat rajibor kinato no darula mesha. Al har sinai yorad wadi barima mesha. Beautiful. Mirushe. Simchu besimchat rajodun kinato no wa mesha. Al har sinai yorad. Beautiful. Ali, you want to try it? No. I'll yes. try. Okay, great, Sabrina. And then I saw Janet. Okay, so Sabrina and then Janet. So I'll do just two verses in a row without stopping. Sim chube sim chatorat zakai kinatono chanula mesha. Beautiful. Sorry, Ali Shava. Sim chube sim chaterat kabir kinaton olo veshlamesha alatina yorad vadi bari mamesha. Ari Isaac, sim chube sim chaterat malach kinaton olo rolemesha. Yes, I love this. Quinn, is that a raised hand? All right. Sim chuve sim chator at semer, kinatono ezer la mesha. Al ha sinayorat, wadiba hima mesha. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay, I will sing. Yeah, the whole, uh, I have a request to sing the whole thing once more. Is that the chorus or the, or the, you wanna hear the chorus again or the verse or just the whole song? And, sh and Shay. Great. So I'll sing. I'll sing a one time. I'll sing a few times now the chorus and the verse. And so now, if you're interested in singing a verse, so start paying attention, and then we'll pass around the verses. Okay. Sim chobet sim chateret poder kinato no sadik la mesha al har sina yorad wadi bari mesha. Sim chube sim chaterat poder kinato no sadik la mesha al har sina yorat wadi bari mamesha. Yeah, and what I'll do is just write the transliteration for the chorus part. In case anyone just wants to read straight from here. Sim chube sim chaterat kodesh kinaton orachum la mesha al har sina yorad wadi bari mamesha. Sim chube sim chaterat shadai kinaton otakif la mesha al har sina yorad. Wadi bari mamesha, sim chube sim chatora tomech, kinato no tomim la mesha, al har sina yorad, wadi bari mamesha. Okay. Um, anyone else want to try a verse or a chorus? 
or ready to move on to a new song. Okay, great, Sari. So I'll sing the verse and then you sing the chorus. Simchu basimchat terat mesha, kinato no alehim la mesha. Al hausina yorad, wadi bari ma mesha. Do another one, beautiful. Simchu basimchat terat adin, kinata na boruch la mesha. Al harsina yorad, wadi bari ma mesha. Okay, Elena. Simchu besimchat torat hadud, kinato no alehim la mesha. Al harsina yorad, wadi bari ma mesha. And she, simchu besimchat torat zakai. Kinato no alehim la mesha. Al hasina yora, badiba hima mesha. Al hasina yora, badiba hima mesha. Wow, that was so wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for singing. And we can come back to that one later if we'd like. Um, okay, great warm up. So now we're going to get into something a little more complicated, uh, more words and more notes. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so anyway, let's just jump in. So you're going to, if you're looking along in the words, um, it's going to be on page one. Um, yeah, this is a poem by Ibn Ezra. It's a really beautiful text that I personally can't really translate effectively. Um, I like sort of, I, when I learned it, I went over the words with my teacher, but it's just really complicated Hebrew, but I'll give you just some glimpses of pieces. So at the beginning you have like, no, it's about the Torah. So it's talking about the Torah the whole time. Um, and it's in the style of a Zafa, which is the, um, like accompaniment song at a wedding. So we're sort of like treating the Torah as a bride. Asula lafonim bachise aravot. So like noble in faces in a chair or a seat of willows, she is pulled to the land um, with pangs of love. Um, hidden in the Aron, in the ark. Um, what else? Um, here's the last verse is, um, whoever is hers is, is happy and will be blessed and will be blessed with all of the, the blessings that are in her written. So whoever belongs to the Torah will be happy and will be blessed by all the blessings written in the Torah. Okay, um, so I'll just sing, there's a, the way this works is that there's a verse and the verse is sung kind of out of time. And the verse is sung by two people. So there's sort of a initial phrase and, or like a question and then there's a response and then there's a question and a response and then everyone sings the chorus and the chorus is the same as the first verse. Um, so maybe let's learn the chorus first. I'll sing it a few times and then we'll learn it. And I'll sing a I'll sing a verse and a chorus so you could just get a sense of the song. Ma 
Okay, let's learn a bit of it. Um, thanks for listening. So, okay, I have an idea, which we'll see if you're into, but I thought I could teach you the call and response of the verses, and then we could actually go into breakout rooms and you could sort of more in a private space, try it with a partner, the call and response, and then we'll come back and we can try to do it the whole song. Um, what, what do you think? Okay, let's try it. And if the time comes to be in a breakout room and you really don't wanna be in one, then you'll have a way to opt out. So we'll do that. Um, okay. So the first part is, um, We'll zoom in on the verse. So this time, um, I'll just sing the verse again. And this time, sort of pay attention, like you're wanting to learn it and you're following along with when the notes go up and down. <laughs> That's the first person. No, the first person keeps going. La <laughs> That's the first person. And the second person responds. The second line is the same melody. So now we'll we'll break it down. Um, I really struggled to learn this. It like took me like a, a lot of paying attention and a lot of listening. So if you're not getting it, that's okay. We're just gonna just jump in and try to learn it. Um, so Asulo. It's, I love getting to see you singing, even though I can't hear you. Now I'm going to add a little decoration to the end of Asulo. Asulo. Once again, that's Asulo. Okay. 
okay, we're gonna keep that and we're gonna add one more decoration. Asulo. Do it one more time. Asulo. Asulo. Second word. La La phony. La phony. How are you doing? I'm going to put it together. I'll, I'll put it together and then if you want me to break it down again, then just jump in and let me know. Ah, so La Fonny Try it. Asulo La Fonny That's person one. Anyone want to try it? Just so I can assess how anyone's doing. Yeah, I'm gonna break down the ornamentation on La Fonim. So, La Fonim, just do that much. La Fonim, La Fonim. Oh, hold on. That was right, okay, sorry. <laughs> Um, so, la foni, la foni, and so then together it goes la foni. So try it, la foni. So the whole part one goes Asulo La Foni And then the second person responds We'll come back to that because the second line for the first person starts the same. La -da -as. Try that. La -da -as. Yes, and the second person goes, Anyone want to try part one and I'll respond with part two? Okay, great, Eli. Thank you. I'm going to try. Okay, amazing. Asulo, Asulo, La Foni, Bahise Arove, La Ara. Yes, 
Eli. Beautiful. <laughs> Give some love or some twinkle fingers for Eli. Very brave. Um, cool. Anyone else want to try it? So we get to hear it again. Great. Awesome, Sabrina. So you can unmute. Asulo. Oh, no, I'm good. Yeah, 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 that was it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have it. La Foni. Bahi se arove. La la. Machu Okay, I didn't trust myself. Okay. Got it. It's, it's beautiful. I really like it. Cool. All right, everyone ready to learn part two? We'll try it. And then um, and then we'll put we'll go into groups so you can experiment with other verses or practice with the first verse. So here is part two. So we just did Asulo La Foni Bahi and then so part two. Bahi se try Bahi se Bahi se Bahi se Bahi se Arobe Arobe so basically what you're doing, um, and maybe actually we should do it this way, really simple, you're going So try that without the ornament. Now we add the ornamentation. How are we doing on that? Okay, so then we'll do it again. When you hear the first person, we'll go, la da ma shu ba ha Anyone wanna try part two while I try part one? Joy, awesome. Great. Okay, so I'll do part one, you'll do part two. Asulo la foni bahise. Sorry. Yes, beautiful joy. Thank you so much. Okay, so I think what we'll do now is um, we'll have, I hope this isn't too complicated for Jesse, but um, how about this? Put, if you want to go into a breakout room and try with a buddy to put together a verse, um, you could just do the first verse or you could choose another verse if you want to tackle some new words. Um, put a one in front of your name. If you'd like to go to a breakout room and be put with a buddy to practice the verse. 
And if you don't want to practice the verse, then um, we can stay in this room and work on the chorus a little. Some people want to work on the chorus. So what it'll, this will be really easy for me. If you just rename yourself and put the number one in front of your name, then it'll be really easy for me to like sort people. Oh yeah, so you, sorry. Um, you have to clarify if you put a one at the beginning of your name like that, but don't put me in a breakout room, Jesse. So I'm going to undo it. It's okay. <laughs> okay, great. This is working so well. I'm almost done. Okay. Somebody put a one at the end of their name, but I still got it. I still got you. <laughs> um, okay. So there's one, there, there's going to be one group of three. Okay. All right. Great. We've got, uh, a few, a few people, <laughs> um, and a lot of people are staying behind, but it's, it's perfect. So the rest of us will work on the chorus, which will be great. Let's like, if you're here, just take a quick stretch, because we've been together now for an hour. So, wiggle, wiggle. Ah. Um, and are the breakout people gone? Because I still see oh. people's with one. No, I can. <laughs> Okay, I'll put the I'll I'll put them in a room for how much time should we give them? Um hmm, four minutes. Okay. All right, and but if you uh, want to come back sooner, you can. If you feel done yeah. and you want to come back sooner, yeah, come back sooner. Okay, cool. Um so okay, I just opened the breakout rooms for the the um ten or so people. So exciting. Okay. okay. They're, they're, all, they're all in their rooms now. It's just us. <laughs> Great. All right. So we are going to jump into the chorus. So I'll sing it for you once and then I'll break it down. It goes like this. Same words. So yay. Asulo la fonim bachise arove. La ras ma shucho ba chavele ahovet. I'll sing it one more time. Asula, asulo la phonim ba chise arovet. La ras ma shucho ba chavele ahovet. And let's break it down. Asulo. And then we'll add an ornament. Asulo. Asulo. Okay. And then it's going to go. La fo. Asulo. La fo. Ah, sorry, so asulo la fonim la asulo la fonim try it asulo la fonim asulo la fonim um, and then it sounds very similar. Same thing for the first words. Okay, so I'll sing the whole line now. Sing along your head and listen to see if it doesn't match up and then try it yourself. Asulo la fonim bachise arovet la ras ma shucho bachavele ahovet Asulo la 
חולים, בכיסא על עובד, לרס משוכו, בחבלי העובד. Um, anyone, Noor, you want to try? Amazing. We'll just get you unmuted. Muted myself. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, that was perfect. Okay, we're going to bring back the breakout room people. Thank you, Jesse. Um, Noor, amazing. Anyone else want to try it while we're waiting for the other folks to trickle in? All right. Asu lo la fonim bachi se arove la arat mashuho bachi bachavle ahove. Yes, beautiful. Okay, are we all back now, Jesse? Yes. Okay, great. Um, okay, amazing. So I think we have time to sing it with some of our volunteers singing the verse and the chorus. So um, does anyone who went to a breakout room want to volunteer to do verse one? And just um, say it out loud so we can hear you and say who your partner is. Yes, I'd like to go with Rachel. Great, who said that? Mira, it's me, oh, Mira, sorry. <laughs> so Mira and Rachel, and you wanna do verse one? Uh, yes, please. Great. Anyone wanna do the first chorus? Noor, you wanna do the first chorus? Okay, great. Um, did anyone else work on verse one who wants to do it? We worked on verse one. Um, okay, great. So who said that? Sabrina and Itai? Yes. Okay, uh, so we'll do verse one as well. And Rabbi Lynn, if you'd like to join us. <laughs> Up to I'm you. sorry, just, just to clarify, verse one is Asulo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, okay, good. <laughs> I'm nervous. So we'll do verse one again. Um, anyone else do another verse? or the first verse that wants to go as well. Um, Eli and I were happy to go. Great. Who said that? Was that Isaac? Oh, that was Isaac, yes. Okay, great. Which, did you do the first, first verse as well? Uh, no, we did only look at the first verse. You did the first verse. Okay, great. Beyond, but. Um, okay, so we'll just go back and forth between the verse and the chorus. Does anyone want to do a chorus after the second verse one? Joy? Okay, great. And then, and then we'll have Eli and Isaac, verse one, and then, and then Sarah can do a chorus. And if you want to jump in with anything after, just jump in or write in the chat. Um, but let's try it. So we'll start with Mira and Rachel, followed by Noor. Hey. <laughs> Laras 
now remind me how they it starts <laughs> Sabrina, oh. oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Ah, snow, Remind me how it starts. Um, Quinn, you want to take us out with another chorus? Asulo la phonim bahi se arovet la aras mashu ho bakhavle ahovet. Wow, that was beautiful. Um, Thank you so much. Um, we're out of time. We won't get to our third melody, but thank you so much for lending your voices and lending your ears and big props to everyone who sang in public. Uh, I know it's not easy. Um, feel free to hang out now and schmooze. I'd love to hear from you. You have my um, email address on the um, song sheet. If you have any que follow-up questions for me, you wanna write any questions in the chat, I'll hang out for a bit. Um, thank you so much, and Chag Sameach, and Shavua Tov. Sameach, thank you so much. A lot of fun. Thank you very much for your time and for your melodies. These are great. Yeah. Thanks, Sabrina. My pleasure. Chag Sameach, thank you. Chag Sameach.